Assumption number two. Nothing has touched that rock. Nothing has seeped in or crept out of it in the 4.5 billion year history that it's supposed to have had. That is a very serious assumption. Could some water have leaked into that rock and added some lead? Sure. No. Zircon crystals are not water soluble and their crystallizing temperature below which lead cannot escape the crystal lattice is about a thousand degrees Celsius. So if the sample has been heated to that temperature or above and then recrystallized, the scientists can tell when that happened. That's the whole point. They can tell how long it has been since the rock sample and the zircon crystals within it were last molten. Could some water have leaked into that rock and taken some lead or some uranium away? Sure. Mr. Butt clearly has no clue about the properties of zircon crystals within rock samples. It takes patient and effort to learn how the science works. Any idiot can throw mud at it. What has happened to a rock in 4.5 billion years? Uh, who knows? We can't prove that there is a rock that old, but if there were a rock that old, all kinds of things would happen to that rock. You cannot grant the assumption that nothing has happened to that rock to take parent or daughter element in or out of it in 4.5 billion years. Yes, you can. But you need to understand what radioactive decay is and how isotopes of specific elements can be locked into crystalline structures. Uh, assumption number three. The rate of decay of uranium to lead has always been the same. Now, suppose that we look at that idea and we say, yeah, we assume that the rate's always been the same. We have no reason to assume otherwise. The half-lives of unstable isotopes has never been shown to change when subjected to extreme temperatures, pressures, or strong gravity. Here comes another childlike analogy, much like the hosepipe topping up the swimming pool. What's going to happen if you make that type of assumption? Suppose you go out into the woods and you see a man chopping wood. I'm a lumberjack and I'm okay. I sleep all night and I work all day. And you see that he has chopped down 25 trees and you see that it takes him an hour to chop down a single tree. And you say, sir, I see you've been chopping down an hour, a tree for a single hour. It took you one hour to chop down one tree. There are 25 trees on the ground. I am going to assume that you've been chopping 25 hours. He says, oh, no. No. He says, earlier today, when my belly was full and my axe was sharp, I was chopping down six trees an hour. Just in this last hour have I only been chopping down one tree. Oh, well, so then our calculation is off by 20 hours or so because we had the faulty assumption that the rate has always been the same. Half-lives and radioactive decay are not analogous to everyday phenomena such as chopping down trees or drinking tea. We don't have to go far back in history to a time when nobody knew what carbon dioxide was or that plants absorb the carbon and turn it into the food we eat and the wood we use to make things out of. Many scientific discoveries are counterintuitive, which is why those who haven't done their homework, Mr. Butt, should refrain from criticizing it. If you allow the evolutionists to use those assumptions, the scientifically derived understanding of how the natural world works is not determined by whether young Earth creationists allow reasonable assumptions to be made or not then if you use the same assumptions on other dating methods like the, uh, the decay of the Earth's magnetic field or the ratio of helium and hydrogen in the atmosphere, if you get to use those same assumptions, you will see that you can get a very young Earth using those assumptions. They simply cannot be granted to the evolutionist because they are assumptions that are not proven. Thanks to our understanding of plate tectonics, we can be reasonably certain that the Earth's magnetic field changes and flips over long periods of time. The data is locked in the rocks of the ocean floor, which happen to be spreading at a rate comparable to how fast your fingernails grow. This can be cross-calibrated by testing the sea floor basalt radiometrically, and what do you know? The age estimates correlate. So how old is the Earth. Well, 
I'm here to tell you that I can tell you exactly how old the earth is. Don't you mean you can tell us how old you believe it is? Oh, would you like a, a number as to how old the earth is? Oh, I'm sorry, I, I don't think I can give you an exact number. But I can tell you that the Bible tells you how old the earth is. The Bible says in Exodus chapter 20, verse 11, For in six days the Lord made the heavens, the earth, the seas, and all that is in them. It's very self-explanatory. It's only self-explanatory if you assume that the 66-book Protestant Bible is inerrant, regardless of how many contradictions are pointed out to you, such as, how many sons did Abraham have? What does that leave out? The heavens, the earth, the seas, all that is in them? Does that leave anything out? No, it doesn't. In fact, that gets, includes everything. Well, so we've got six days where the Lord made everything. Assuming, of course, that there's nothing symbolic or allegorical about the Genesis creation stories. While I'm at it, there are even contradictions within the first two chapters of Genesis. In Genesis 1, God creates the animals first, and then male and female humans. According to Genesis 2, he creates the man first, then he creates the animals, which the man has to name, and then he creates the first female human. Question. In which order were these things created, according to that supposedly inerrant book? The Bible also says that in Mark chapter 10, verse 6, in the beginning God created them, male and female, talking about humans. So in the beginning God created humans, male and female, the beginning of creation. When you look back in Genesis chapter 1, you see that God created humans on day 6. And if we now turn our Bibles to Genesis chapter 2, verse 4, it says that God created the heavens and the earth in a day. Singular, not plural. I've touched on the whole yom business before. Is it not obvious that the Hebrew word for day can mean more than one thing? More than a literal 24-hour day? How old is the earth? Oh, that's easy. It's exactly five days older than humans. According to certain biblical literalists, millions of Bible-believing Christians don't interpret it that way. But I guess that's not really what you were wanting, was it? Uh, you were wanting more of a number. Well, I think I might can give you a little bit more of a number. If you were to take the time that we have been on this earth and try to get back to the time that Jesus was on this earth, how many years would that be? That's pretty simple. Uh, the year now is about 2007 A.D. That's the year. It's actually January. Just turned that. About how long has it been from us to Jesus? About 2,000 years. Secular history will give us that. We are in the year 2007 A.D. Anno Domini in the year of our Lord. That's pretty self-explanatory. Pretty easy to understand. Well, how long was it from Jesus to Abraham? Secular history and everybody involved will tell you that that was about 2,000 years. Everybody understands that. It's not a number that's even up for much debate at all. So from us to Jesus, about 2,000 years. From Jesus to Abraham, about 2,000 years. Meanwhile, we have to keep assuming that the Bible is what biblical literalists claim it is. There is dispute about whether Jesus was more than a human being and even whether he was a historical character. The calendar we use today was put in place by humans, so it's hardly surprising that the starting point would coincide with what they believe to be a significant event. As for Abraham being a real character, as depicted by the three main monotheistic religions, that's even less certain. So we just have one more piece of the puzzle. There's only one more piece if you've already assumed your conclusion. How long was it from Abraham to Adam? What if there was no Adam? What if the idea of the first two humans is a just-so story or a parable? 
The scientific evidence points to there being a significant population of humans all around the Mediterranean 6,000 years ago. Read up on your anthropology, Mr. Butt. Did you know that in the Bible, in Genesis chapter 5 and Genesis chapter 11, the Bible gives us genealogies. Genealogies that tell us the age of the father when they had their son. Why do I get the impression that Mr. Butt's target audience has never read what is supposed to be, for them, the most important book in the world? And Adam was 130 years and he begot Seth. And Seth was, and it goes down and tells us. And you know what you can do? You can take that 130 years that Adam lived before he had his son. Hold on a second. The oldest verified person in history was a French lady who died at the age of 122. Just because the Bible tells stories of people living for hundreds of years doesn't mean it's literally true. If Methuselah had been born in the year of the Battle of Hastings, 1066, he would still be alive today. Just think about that for a moment. And add it to the age that the son was before he had his next son, and that son was before he had his next son, and you can get a very good concept of how long it was from Abraham to Adam. I think we can get an even better idea of how the mind of a biblical literalist works. Now from Jesus to Abraham there were about 55 generations and those 55 generations composed about 2,000 years. From Abraham to Adam there were only about 20 generations. Yes, that's what the stories say. And you believe it? And those 20 generations composed about 2,000 years. Well, what do you know? That sure sounds plausible to me. Well, you say, why were there 55 generations between Jesus and Abraham, and those 55 composed 2,000 years, but there were only 20 generations between Abraham and Adam, and those 20 composed 2,000 years? Why such a big difference? Because it's a story. Think about that just for a second. The ages of the patriarchs in Adam's time. Adam living to be over 900. Methuselah living to be 969. It makes perfect sense. The abbreviated number of generations because of their long time spans. Oh well, I'm glad you cleared that one up. There was me thinking I would have to abandon my understanding of the aging process. And when we look in the New Testament, we look in Jude 14. Jude 14 says, Now Enoch, the seventh from Adam, prophesied. And tells you what Enoch prophesied. Did you know when you look back in Genesis, and you look at Enoch, and you count down how many he was from Adam, guess where he was? the seventh from Adam. New Testament commentary showing us that we know that there were no gaps in the first seven for sure. That only leaves you 13 generations. This quote is problematic for Christian fundamentalists because Jude is quoting from the first book of Enoch which was rejected from the Protestant so-called inerrant 66 book canon. If the book of Enoch was good enough for Jude why did the Christian compilers of the biblical canon reject it? Furthermore, if a collection of books is internally consistent, that does not automatically mean that all of it is true. Tom Sawyer is internally consistent, yet nobody argues that it is non-fiction. Suppose you wanted to try to put humans on this earth for 3.5 million years. Do you know how many years you're going to have to put in between those gaps of the 13 generations? About 270,000 years. And that's only going to give you a number of 3.5 million. That's not going to get you anywhere close to the multiplied millions or billions that the evolutionists need. You're missing the point that critical scientists and historians do not believe in a literal Adam or an accurate biblical genealogy. And that includes many Bible-believing Christians. Oh, no. Oh, yes. Oh, no. Oh, yes. Oh, no. It really does. I'm telling you. Oh, no. No, the Bible makes it clear 
that humans have been on this earth from the very beginning. Only five days separate the creation of humanity from the beginning of the universe. Why can't these hardcore biblical literalists comprehend the idea that their holy book might not be 100% factually and historically accurate? How long have humans been here? There is another clear picture that from Adam to Abraham, about 2,000 years. From Abraham to Jesus, about 2,000 years. And from Jesus to us, about 2,000 years. And if you believe that, you might want to do a little investigation into this newfangled thing called critical thinking. Everything that we know as factual information, scientifically and biblically, fits into this framework. If this is the kind of propaganda which is being fed to the young and impressionable, is it any wonder that we have a problem with scientific literacy? How old is the earth? The Bible is clear. There are not multiply millions or billions of years of earth history. There are only a few thousand. If the Bible is as clear as you claim it is, Mr. Butt, how come there are millions of Christians and Jews who interpret Genesis 1 differently from you and have no problem with the scientifically derived age of the earth and universe? Thank you for being with us this lesson. I look forward to studying more about God, His Word, and His world throughout the remaining lessons. I would be lying if I said it was a pleasure. It was actually quite painful at times. If any of my religious friends have made it this far, please understand that I'm not trying to disprove the existence of your God. I'm defending science and reason against those who seek to undermine it with misinformation. Normally, I don't do the whole please like, subscribe and share thing, but I would appreciate it if this rebuttal of Kyle Butt found its way onto the social media pages of some Young Earth creationists. They need to understand that they are being taken for a ride.